Hey everyone, Ben here from the Ranked Podcast. Today I'm here joined with Gary from Get Me Links. How are you doing, man? Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm awesome. <laughs> Today we're going to do a little bit of a, an exciting SEO episode. Today we have the master of links on here from Get Me Links. So we're just going to do like a little introduction and then uh, just go right into it. So uh, how did you get started? If you just maybe can do a little introduction, a little bit about yourself would be a good start. Awesome. So thank you so much for having me on. Uh, yeah, so I run the company, Get Me Links, but there was a massive journey that went on before um, sort of getting into Get Me Links. So I started an SEO about doing SEO for about four, four or five years ago. Prior to that, I was doing web design. So I was always creating websites, but I was always trying to find a way of sort of been able to get them ranked like i never really understood the concept of getting traffic and uh what, what, what i came across was learning about seo um from a guy called alex becker on youtube from there i started to learn seo and um and one of the biggest problems i had i originally started about an agency and i got some local customers one of the biggest issues i had at the time was um link building right and it was i was spending a lot of time this was back maybe 2016 and at this point, it was just PBNs. Everyone was using PBNs. It was like the thing um, way back then. So I was buying PBNs. I was doing that for, for some of my client sites. And it was quite expensive. And it was like quite a lot of work to, to do it and manage sites and keep them up. Um, even as a web designer, I was still struggling with it. So um, I basically, I learned about this thing called outreach um, to get links. And you know you can, you can basically just get in touch with sites and they can place links for you. And I was like, that's a million times better than what I'm doing. So back then it really came from a place of needing to figure out link building this was before guest posting all that stuff was really cool it was a thing but it wasn't really like a like a big thing that everyone was doing so i started to learn it i got pretty good at it just from doing it for my clients like i started to make it like my main thing for them and after that um i essentially um you know like you start using like advanced tools like pitchbox to do things a lot more efficiently and that was what led me into creating an outreach service. And um, funnily enough, two months before I started the outreach service, which was about a year and a half ago, somebody said to me around me, like, you should start a link building service. You're really, really good at, um, at doing outreach. And I was like, no way, that's a rubbish business. I ain't going to do that. Um, and then like two months later, I'd started it and I had my own, my own site. I was doing really well just because I was, I was actually good at delivering a good product that a lot of other services weren't doing at the time because I'd been doing it for like a few years prior. Um, and then I also got in with, DFY links and after getting with DFY links and doing a lot of their guest post supply for about a year, I ended up buying that company a year later and that's now merged into my own brand Get Me Links. So that's the very the very shortened story of the whole journey, but that's how I got into like building came from and right, right. saving money. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. We, we actually share something very similar. I also got started in web design originally, but you yeah. know the problem with web design is um everyone kind of expects that they'll get traffic just by creating them like right. a new website for them right yeah so exactly. i always struggled i didn't really like paid advertising but then i got kind of into seo also a big follower of becker and right. what uh, what he used to do yeah. um and yeah so you started in 2016 yeah or it, earlier i think it was late 2015 that was when i like originally started learning about what aco was and i think i joined his like it's something called source wave or something like that yeah I yeah that. um and then from there i just sort of like was all in like it was just like the best thing in the world because i'm quite i'm quite a competitive guy so um you know sports or whatever so the concept of being able to beat people out on the serps was <laughs> right up my street um so yeah it just was from there and then i just really took it off for link building that was the site i realized that was where i was always gonna have the most problems and that was where the majority of the costs were going to be so i was like right. this is the, the area that i really need to get good at you know this is the bit i think i need to right. destroy and you know and you started out uh, with client SEO or affiliate? Because if I remember correctly, Becker basically preached a ton of client work or agency work rather in the right. beginning. Sure. Yeah, no, it was it was client. I mean, at the, at the time I was like, I was still in uni. I was at university at the time, so I didn't really have much money. So um, I understood at the time that in order for me to even get near, like I always wanted to rank my own sites. That was the, always the fun bit. It wasn't dealing with clients or doing client work. It was always... I want to actually get good at this and become a master of this art of SEO. But 
um at the time yeah i took on clients it, it was like the best thing i ever did because it means like client for someone who's starting out is always going to be like the best move because you can get instant cash flow plus you can learn how to do things if you're like just starting out in seo no matter how good you say or think you are you're, there's going to be a lot of things you don't know right. there's going to be a lot of things right. that you know and a lot a lot of us are like we're so optimistic you know but there's like 10 million things that can go wrong all the time and um, so, you know, learning on a client site is a great way to start because it puts the pressure <laughs> on you because you're, um, you're you're having to be responsible to someone else, but you're also getting paid for it. So it's like the best thing. You don't need to. Yeah, exactly. You don't exactly. Need to, like, if the site tanks, you're still going to get paid, you know. Um, that's that's like the, the, the total yeah. so, But it's a common story. Like, it's probably the most common story out there, you know. Right. Especially with client, because most of clients, like, especially if they're if they're like not the high quality clients they say right. yeah i have 400 500 bucks right do seo rank me. yeah exactly and then they their For site sure. thanks yeah and yeah um cool so yeah you're doing a client seo and how did you then start transitioning into into like e-commerce or affiliate seo yeah sure so i mean i was so i had done um probably at this point i'd done maybe like a year or so of client I didn't, I never liked it. So I, when I first started, I was charging people too little. So that was actually why I wanted to build the links in the outreach base. Cause I was like, I'd be like charging some of these clients like 500 pounds a month. Right. Which is like, now it's just like crazy. You just can't do SEO for that, but, or you couldn't even do it back then, but I thought I could, you know? Um, <laughs> so I was like spending like all the budget, like my mark, like if I look at gross margin, which I didn't even know what gross margin was back then. If I look at gross margin, like it was probably like 20%, 10%. It was like so bad. I was spending all the money to, to, pay, the, these guys to pay the taxes basically. Yeah, exactly. Like it was just, <laughs> just, just tax, you know? Um, so it was, it, there was no, there was, there was no profit in it at all with the model I had, but basically as I was doing it, I, I really, the whole time was just obsessed with ranking sites. Right. So even though I wasn't making much money, I didn't really even care because my, I was able to do the art of SEO, you know, I was able to learn a lot. Those clients were like the best thing. Cause that gave me like a full year of just like actually getting people results, getting sites ranked and seeing that was like amazing, you know? So from there, um, I knew I knew at the start I always wanted to have my own brand and stuff. I decided to take some e-commerce courses, and I kind of went in for a little while into doing Facebook ads. And this was when Facebook ads were kind of at this like really spammy moment where like everyone was just um, putting up these like drop shipping sites um, as well. So I kind of got into e-commerce from there. I made a fair bit of money doing just like Facebook ad stuff, and on the back of that, I was also doing. SEO and link building. And at this point, I was getting a bit better outreach. I decided to get Pitchbox and I was using, you know, I had this this fashion site, which actually I've still got to this day, which still makes a um over a grand a month actually. Just it just sits there and makes money. But basically this this was one of my first ever like sites. And I had I had um I had <laughs> basically done Facebook ads, so I made quite a lot of money with that, and then I did SEO on the back of it. And what I was doing is I was doing outreach to like mummy bloggers or different bloggers. And I was saying to them, hey, do you want one of our like premium platinum dresses on our website? And just give us just give us a link on this page or get or give us guest posts, right? Um and you know, they would come on the website and it was like $70, $80 dollar dresses that I had listed, but really they were just from China and they were like six bucks. Right. Like um and they, you know, these these mind bloggers were like soaking up like this is like the best site ever. Like I had some of them like putting on their website, like unbelievable, they've given me a one hundred and twenty dollar dress, you know. Like, you know, you've got to check out these guys. And I was getting, like, customers off these mummy bloggers. <laughs> Plus, I was getting links on them, and it was costing right, me 20 right. bucks a pop. So I just got, you just got creative, you know, and that's what you figure out as you're doing outreach. Like, there's so many, like, little tricks and ways you can be smart because all you're doing with outreach is dealing with people. And it's just, if you're good in business and you're good at negotiating, like, you can right. do very, really well, very well in business. Um, sorry, doing outreach because you can um, you can just think of all these unique ways of getting links, you know. So right. that was just like so much fun. And that was really how I originally got into e-commerce was, was through that one site, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, on that note, I also wanted to mention um, another very smart way to get links is just to run an affiliate program, right? Because chances are you'll get yeah. very high, very highly relevant links um, from solid sites that already have traffic, that have an audience, just pointing back to your site. So it's yeah. it's also super good. Okay, so that's e-commerce. Maybe you also have like uh, started any affiliate sites, like um, not not necessarily Amazon, but uh, like any other sites. For sure, yeah. I mean, I've got um, I've got a site in the health supplement space just now, um, which is actually an e-commerce one that does really, really well. I actually did a case study of that on my website. So there's some massive uh, numbers and what kind of links I did and 
like an analysis right. that I was making that said. So it's called the 20k case study. It's on Get Me Links. Um, that's that's one of my biggest ones. I also have a few smaller affiliate sites which which do some numbers. I've got one in the, the pet space which um, my staff actually works on. Um, but more so now, like I I focus on and sort of but if I'm going to do any project, it's going to usually be bigger stuff. I want to make considerable amounts of money, and I think e-commerce is one of the the best ways. Of it. As the affiliate, you're always at the kind of um, you're always in the losing battle essentially. Like you're and the, the, there's a lot of affiliate niches that are great, but if you don't own the company or the business behind the product, um, you're you're never going to win. And what I've really realized now, you know, just a kind of high level thought is that it's not good to just do SEO and just do affiliate. Like actually, if you come in and create a business, right, a proper business, whether it's an e-commerce company, whether it's a company that um, does services that lead to yourself, that's good real value, right? If you're looking to sell it or if you're looking to um, right. take on other traffic sources because you can compete with, if you can go to a paid ads level, you can compete with other businesses, right? If you're right. just the affiliate for some business, you can't really go into paid ads and really scale that successfully. It's very hard to do that because right. you're competing with businesses that are servicing the product, right? You're just not, you're not like a middleman, you know what I mean? So yeah. that's kind of, that's kind of the way I focus on things now. But I think affiliate is brilliant for people who are learning, for people who want to make like a little bit of extra income, you know, grand, two grand to 10 grand a month. Affiliate is like absolutely fantastic for that but um for me now i'm just like really really focused on creating businesses good businesses and um just just constantly doing that you know that's what i enjoy the most yeah yeah that's awesome and i also really like the point that you made because a lot of like just the way that i see other like online flippers you can call them how they how some people start sites with just display ads then they kind of transition into affiliate then they transition into e-commerce and then they turn that same affiliate site, site into an entire brand. Right. In my opinion, that top, the top one will allow you to flip for the, the best possible uh, multiple, um, yeah. highest margins, plus you actually have some control because as, as we all saw what happened with Amazon affiliate, the program and how they just cut everyone off by like 50%, just a, a much safer, but also a better play, I would say. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. In, in business, if you're if you're trying to make a big company past 10k a month, like this is just a really high level thing. If you're trying to make a proper business and you're trying to make a hell of a lot of money, um, up to you know six figures a month, whatever. If you're trying to make serious serious money, you need to be thinking like about creating a business, right? And if you're if you're if you're in the world of just doing affiliate, you, you I'm not don't get me wrong. I, I know affiliate sites that have sold for millions and millions of pounds. But that's very uncommon. If you look at the the vast majority of affiliate sites, there's a very small percentage of them that make considerable amounts of money, and the rest of them really just make small amounts, and they're never going to be able to grow to extreme high levels because they don't own the customers, they don't own the product, they don't have any systems in their business, they don't have other routes that they can really advertise other than sort of doing these like SEO hacks or ways to get sort of free traffic because their traffic's less valuable than the real brands, right? You're always just in the losing pie when you're in an affiliate program. And Amazon was a great example of that. Like I was speaking to somebody a year ago about that exact thing. Like Amazon could just like in two seconds decide they don't want affiliates and instantly everyone's down 50%. I said that exact thing and it happened like a year later. Um, so that's that's just, yeah, and that's not just Amazon. That's any affiliate program. You're not in control of any deals that you make with another company. You know, you are just... Right. You're just you're just servicing their business, and if they feel they don't need affiliates at that point, if they feel they don't want you, they, they'll not take you. You know, if it was my business, and I I didn't. I mean, the reason why Amazon probably you know reduced their rates because the the cost the traffic wasn't as valuable. You know, everyone was going to their website anyway. They didn't need to pay out affiliates six percent, seven percent. Right, right. So right. why why would they bother? They don't need to. They're, they're there to make profit. So if they can just change a switch and make another you know hundred million this year, that's great. They're not going to like cry about that. So that's. That, that's kind of where where you've got to get your your business head on a bit and you need to take the online world you need to take all this seo stuff whatever marketing it is you're doing whether it's seo paid advertising adwords whatever it is you're doing um you need to take all those things and then say okay this skill is great and it's going to allow me to get traffic but what am i going to apply this to am i going to apply this to a real company that i'm going to build or am i going to apply this to an affiliate business where i'm not in full control right Right, and right. They both have their advantages. Affiliate is great for starting out. It's easy. You can, you know, have a website going in two minutes. You can be making money straight away. It's very, very easy. 
but going down the business route, it's going to be a lot of long-term work. When you do that, you could be losing money like on your systems and there's a lot of stuff you have to work out with creating products and selling products, selling services. However, long-term with this way, you're always going to be the, on top because you control right. the whole right. landscape, you know? Yeah, it's know. just kind of giving giving yourself permission to think bigger, right? Because affiliate is super good, especially if you're a beginner and starting with making money online, right? It's super good because, yeah, you make your first... 1000 2000 whatever it might be a month but then you kind of stop so what many people do they start to scale like more websites but what i would suggest instead is just thinking how you can push it to the max so right. e-commerce um just or maybe just partnering up in different ways when you start doing that you can you can really hit it big and you really sell for for a very good uh, multiple. monetize exactly i mean that, that's a massive thing that most people don't think about like monetize what you have like i think if i if i was given like a hundred thousand pounds right now okay and i had a site right now that was maybe getting like ten thousand traffic a month i had a hundred thousand pounds sitting there and somebody said to me what would you do with this money like with this website most people would say things like okay i'm going to build links to the site i'm going to build content to the site what I would actually do is I would look at how the site's currently monetized because you could make one change on that site. Let's say you're doing affiliate and you're selling, I don't know, a dog leash. Um, you could do one change on that site by deciding to go from making $2 per dog leash selling it on Amazon to drop shipping it yourself and making $20 per dog leash, right? Exactly. And you're exactly. just 10x, like your conversion rate might drop slightly, but you've just 10x the value of every single customer. Plus, you've not even thought about the lifetime value of that customer. You could sell that that same customer another hundred dollars worth of dog stuff, right? And email lists, exactly. Other stuff or dog, yeah, you know that sells yeah, a dollar. Yeah. So that's when people don't think long term enough. A lot of the time, they don't think actually. If I own customers, customers are valuable. Customers can buy more stuff. I know exactly. those people. I can interact with those people and sell them a crap ton of stuff going forward. You know, so also like. Uh... Like Craig often uh, mentions, for example, he has a ton of PBNs, but never just PBNs. They are affiliate sites. They have display ads. They have <laughs> they have right. everything on them just to extract as most revenue. Just looking from it from a business perspective, exactly. right? Just yeah. so you can extract as much revenue from them as possible. Exactly. Yeah. So it's so, so it's all that, and a lot of people they just vote like a lot of SEOs. They're so focused on traffic and growing the website, and actually, I mean that's great. Don't get me wrong. More traffic is brilliant. It's always going to make you money, but sometimes it's actually just easier to flip a switch and just think about the business for two seconds and very often you can you can completely make turn more it. money that way precisely i mean that health supplement site that i was talking about that i did the one that was in mm -hmm. the case study when we first started that site it was making like um i think we got it to like five or ten thousand traffic when we first ranked the site and it was making like a few grand a month we were just doing affiliate there was no product there was no e-commerce behind that site so we we're just doing affiliate. It was like it was doing okay, like, but we knew we could have done better. So we then switched that to e-commerce. And then later on for the we tried bounce around for a while, but later on we had the same traffic. We were making like five X, six X what we were making on affiliate by just selling the product. Now, to sell the product was very difficult. We had to get drop shipping deals, we had to um, you know, get payment processors, there was all sorts of stuff we had to sort out. Um, and it wasn't as easy as it seems. You don't just sign up for Stripe in this niche. Um, there was a lot of stuff we had to, to deal with to, to get that. Um, so we did all this stuff, right? And it took a lot of time, but it meant later on our, our rewards massive because we now have customer lists. We can use those customer lists for retargeting. We can use those customer lists for email. We can sell those people more products. We get recurring sales that we never got an affiliate. There's just so much benefit. Like right. from making that one change, I reckon we've like easily, if on, a, on a lifetime level, five to 10x what we would have made by just doing affiliate, right? And that's that's the point I would always say to someone in a position where they've got a site with some traffic already is look at other ways of monetizing. You know, how can you take this site forward? How can you monetize this better? Do you know what I mean? Craig Craig's massive in that as well. That's what he does, you know, with everything. Get every strength strength of penny you can out of your current traffic. And then when you build more traffic, it's now worth five or ten X what it was before. It's great. You're gonna be you're gonna be laughing all the time, you know. <laughs> And right, it will allow right. you to open your ideas up as well to more other forms of traffic. Because if you realize, because my traffic now is so valuable, I can now buy buy ads. I can now do that. I can now do all this other stuff that I never would have even looked at before um, because I was just so focused on SEO and doing affiliate, right? Because I've now made an e-commerce brand, I can now like just amplify 
the the the, the, the traffic sources coming in, which in, which decreases your risk and ultimately um, increases your sale value because you're now just making a bigger company that makes more profit, right? Right, right. And in regards to that, something I've been recently thinking about for my sites, I just primarily do. I do a little bit of email marketing. Um, SEO is, is the main one. But how, do you have like maybe advice on how would you go about like forming partnerships or just finding people to take care of PPC, email marketing, different things like that? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I've got actually, so for Get Me Links, I've got a guy that does um, he does all my Facebook ads for me. Right? I'm in, I'm involved. I know how Facebook ads that work. I've done it all myself, but I'm a huge advocate of finding people who are better at things than me and getting exactly. them to do it. Right? It's, yeah. it's silly to, it's silly. Like for for me, I consider myself a business guy. That's all I am. I just come up with ideas. I come up with ways of growing, and I'll create new things. I love like making stuff and like making new things that you know help help businesses. Right. So that's what I focus on. I'll make I'll make training. I'll make products. I'll make services better. That's that's all I do. I can do Facebook ads. I can do SEO all day, but I like to find people to do those things. In terms of finding those people, really just comes from I think being great networking to be truthful that's networking how always, yeah and um, that's how i've always um done so well i mean that guy that does my facebook ads no joke i was sitting in starbucks right and this dude came up behind me and he was like hey is that shopify you're on and i was like yeah and he sat and i was like i'd said sit down buddy i said let's have a coffee let's chat <laughs> like and we're just like we chat for like an hour this random dude like just in my local starbucks um, and then he started pulling out his um, his ads manager, and I was like, "Bloody hell, you're like spending a hundred k a month here on like this this product they had at the time." I don't want to say what it is, but he had like I was like, "Holy crap, you must know what you're doing." He was showing me all this Facebook ad stuff, and then we just like kept in touch, like kept it cool, and then eventually I was like, "Hey, I need Facebook ads. I'm just going to get you to do it." And now we've got a deal, and it's like that's that's exactly how um, how I do business with anyone and find people. Like I would just. I just look for people who are good at things and ultimately you will you will find people who are you know you can be friendly with and eventually you'll you, you know you'll be able to find someone who can who can right. do things for you much better than you'll ever be able to do it you know? right and would you recommend doing like a partnerships or or like a invoice based uh, agreement in yeah it, it, it i mean it depends on the situation if your business um I always prefer, I mean, this was advice that Craig actually gave me, <laughs> uh, Craig that we're talking about, but I always prefer to pay people a fixed amount of money or a percentage based on my business that I own, right? Exactly. A performance-based, like performance-based sales is great. The, pro, the, the one issue with performance-based sales is if your business gets really big, you can end up losing a lot. So for example, if you're paying someone by 10%, for example, of of uh, of your revenue for example for them to handle something and get specific sales um then it means that you can if your business gets massive you can end up paying a lot of money right yeah but it would only be what comes through the ads right so if Precisely. they're doing the if the growth has been because they did such a good job because of right? their work exactly exactly and, you know you, you don't want to screw people like at the end of the business your your your, your root goal is to reduce as much cost and make as much profit right that's your always in your head when you're you know at the top of the chain and you're doing business right, but right. you need to understand that if you're doing a deal with someone like that that they are making you a lot of money and you want them to make a lot of money because by them making a lot of money and seeing the potential that they can make thousands 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 of pounds that is going to allow them to do a better job and ultimately get you better like do you better results i see so many people that do deals with people and they try to screw them up they try to get really good deals and they maybe negotiate good deals because the other person on the other side is quite weak and they'll screw a good deal, but the deal will never work out because they don't reward the other person. You need to understand the business negotiation. You need to put yourself on the other side of the chain and say, would I take the deal I'm offering up right now? Would I actually right. do someone's Facebook right. ads for 500 quid a month, right? Is that reasonable to do a very, very good job for a business making 100k a month, right, for example? Like at, if, at that level, should I be paying someone 500 quid a month for that? And the, pro the answer is probably no, right? So You've got to do that. You've got to be fair, but you've also got to be firm and not paying too much. I like to pay people fixed amounts, or I like to pay people a percentage based on, um, on what on what they earn. I don't like to do like ownership JVs or anything like that with with people who do work for me because you're just losing a lot of control that way. Um, usually, just a kind of payment structure like that is usually the best thing. You're in full control of the business. You can keep them or get rid of them at any point, and you're paying them based on performance. Really, is my right. Favorite. Right. Yeah. Um, another another question that I have uh, is actually something that Craig. So we just keep keep on going back. This um, is the Craig podcast. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he always mentions it on, on his podcast. Yeah, I, I watch the live streams a lot. <laughs> he does a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, he often talks, talks about uh, when he gets a new client, and you talk about this a lot too. He will take a look at their links and just build tiers to the links. And you have right. this incredible guide. By the way, to the listeners and viewers, I would recommend that you first off check out the e-commerce case study. It's incredible. And then second, the tier link building guide. Uh, guide. Uh, it's it's brilliant. Maybe you can just uh, share a little bit on that and how it works and why it gives you that that boost uh, in, in the SERPs. For sure. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> this is something that people don't really often think about. Um, but at the end of the day, the way Google works is they just follow, you know, they just follow links, right? So... Google clicks from one place, they go to the next place, they go to the next place, and that's how they build this web of trillions and trillions of pages on the internet. Um, and what, what people forget is that um, the, the power that you get from your links doesn't just happen at one level, right? Um, the power comes from an original source, and this original source that Google calls it is called, um, this is what's in their patents, whether it is like this, I have no idea, but essentially power needs to originally come from somewhere. You can't have one link from a random blog going to here, like, that, that gives power like that's just like it's non-realistic the power comes from what's called a seed site which is usually going to it's going to be like a list of sites like maybe washington post new york times like these root sites right and these guys these guys might have a score of 100 right and you might after all these clicks and building this web you might be 15 clicks away from one of these seed sites right so that power every single time is is dying down as you as you go down that chain right it doesn't it starts at 100 it may go to like 90 80 76 by the time it gets to you you've got four points right four ranking points from the, the power of that link okay so tiered links is essentially just a way of amplifying the existing links you have right and the great thing about doing tiered link building is you don't need to think too much about relevance so when google looks at relevance they actually only look at it between two pages so they'll normally look at it in your site and the link coming into you, right? If you've got 20 links going to that link, which is coming to you, they, they, they won't look at these links and analyze that for you over here, right? It's too much work. Mm -hmm. So you can be quite spammy here, actually, and build some pretty cheap but powerful links, right? Now, you can be ultra spammy on this level, to be honest with you, because you're only going to affect this page in terms of its rankings, but the power is still going to pass, right? Because right. all these guys have seed links coming into them and, you know, the, the, these guys link to you, you're going to get quite a lot of power coming in and essentially you're going to amplify this link, especially if this page is on like a big site, like why I advocate in like high authority guest posting. Because it's already to, strong, right? Exactly. It's already, the site's already strong, but the page doesn't have much like trust yet because it's not got any links. So by right. you linking a couple of times to this page, you're amplifying the the value of that page because it was like, this is a big, this is a big page, this is a big site. And they've got this page, but right now it's got no link. So, we're, you know, we're going to pass some juice, but not really do much yet. And then this, this page, gets a feeling like, holy crap, this is a huge site. And this page, people are linked to this page. Let's really amplify this, right? right? And that's kind of like, that's kind of like, um, that's going to just pass more and more juice all the time. And if this link is relevant to you as well, it passes even more. It's like the, the perfect equation of what you can do right now in the SERPs is, is, is build tiered links. Now, that guide explains where and how many tiered links I would build and how I would do it and where to kind of think about it, like in more detail. Um, but, you know, put, put simply, like if you've got a page that requires a lot of authority, sometimes you don't need to keep building lots and lots of tier one links. Sometimes actually just building some tier two links to your existing tier two. great tier ones can, um, can really do a lot. You know, if you've already got some DR90s, DR80s and stuff and they have no links going to them, not building some tiered links to them would be crazy, you know. You should right. really always do that. Right. Um, so that's that, that's that's basically the premise behind it, and it's it's something that a lot of people don't think about. I don't really go past tier two. Some people will talk about tier three and stuff. That just gets like a bit too crazy for me. But I I just focus on tier two, tier to tier one, um, really just juice up all those top tier ones, and especially like like the, the use cases are going to be something like so let's say you've got an inner page that's ranking, um, on page one. And maybe you have like 10 links to that inner page and your competitors above you maybe have like four links, three links, two links, like, but they're maybe like a more authoritative site and they have less links to the page. You don't want to keep hitting your page and build another five links to that page where you're now 15 links to the page because it starts to look a bit unnatural. But what you can do is just tiered links. So build more power to your existing links, right? That'll pass more juice to your page and probably you'll beat a lot of those guys out just by doing the tiered link building, you know? 
Right, right. And uh, to, to anyone listening, I just want to, to mention, uh, Gary recently put out an epic course. Um, like, to be honest, I, I don't even know if anyone put out anything like it. Uh, you have relevancy, you have tiers, um, you have just a ton of info that uh, that a lot of people just don't cover. They mention tier ones and how you need to get a ton of links, um, but there, that's that. But in the course, you can, it's completely free, right? Completely free, yeah. No so you can you can check out uh, tier link building relevancy and maybe it should be it would be good if we just go into the relevancy a little bit and how much of an impact that has um, on a site. Yeah, for sure. I mean, relevancy is relevancy is something that uh, has always allowed me to win in this era. So a lot of people they still don't really understand relevancy like its core level. Um, I mean, so what people, like people when I say relevant to someone, they'll often think of things like Moz Trust. Um, trust topic or whatever it is like the the most the most topic on there. Or they'll think about like okay, if I if I have a finance website and I get a link from a business website, that's really really relevant. Or if I get a link from another finance website, that's really relevant. But right. actually, the way you need to think about it is that Google inherently just looks at words. Okay, they they can only they only get relevance from reading English. Okay, reading what's on web pages to establish relevancy. Okay, so. Once you get that in your head, that takes you a long way into understanding relevancy. If I have a page that's about, let's just go for something like dog food, right? Best dog food is my page that I'm, that I'm trying to rank. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll go out and they'll get they'll get um, they'll get links from like pages about dogs or how to feed your dog or how to walk your dog, um, and they'll get lots of links like that, right? And they'll be like, oh, that's relevant because it's on a lifestyle blog or it's on, and that's related to dogs. Or it's on a pet website and that's related to dogs, right? And yeah, it's related to dogs in some kind of weird way with, with like with like similar words, but it's not about dogs, right? If you, It's not about dog food. So if, for example, I get a, I get a link on a, on a website that's like mummyblogger.com forward slash um taking dog for a walk, right? That's that's what the page is about. And that links to my dog food page. That's like only partially relevant. That's not relevant, right? Because that's about walking dogs and your page is about dog food, right? right. So what I say to people is if you want to rank dog food, get a link from a page that's about dog food, right? You know what <laughs> I mean? Like you want to match the two pages as much as possible. All Google does is, is matches pages, right? To establish right. relevancy. You look at the keywords on the on page on one page and they want to match it to the on page on the other page, okay? Now, there's a lot of things that they can look at. They can look at title tags, they can look at H tags, they can look at on page content. There's lots of things they can look at on one page to establish its relevancy. And they'll probably put different scores and all those on those things. But essentially, just match the two things up. If you've got a page about dog food, get a link from a page about dog food. It's quite damn simple. And that's, that's how you get relevancy. And at the site level, the site level matters as well. If you're getting on a pet website as compared to a general website, a general news site, that's always going to be better. But where you can really amplify things is if you get a link from like a dog website, right? Imagine you had a imagine you had a link from a dog food website that had a lot of links linking to your right. dog food page. That would be like the best thing in the world, right? That would be super. You'd have domain relevance and page relevance linking over, right? Now and that's very hard. Years at it, and it like slow. For, exactly. Now that's like the best thing you can do, but that's hot. That's difficult to do at scale. That's very very hard. Really, you'll win most of the time right now by just getting pages that are relevant to you and linking those over. Most. Go, go and look at SERPs. You'll see how little people actually do it. They think they're building relevant links because it's like taking dog for a walk, linking to a dog food pain. They're like, oh, I'm building relevant links all day long. But actually, no, they're like halfway there. They're not fully there. Right. right. And oft, often you'll get like things that are th even pages like taking pet for a walk to a dog food page and people are like, that's relevant. Now you literally have no words that match up on that page to this page. All you have is like pet, which is kind of related to dog, right? You don't have dog and dog right or dog food and dog right? right and just i say match up the words as much as possible get the relevance perfect and it just makes your links like massively better more and more i've seen google like just move towards getting that precise relevancy that's really what they care about right it's just another op like opportunity right uh, especially if you just go to uh, if you're building out uh, a new site you go to the competitors you take a look at what kind of links they actually have most of the time, it will be something kind of relevant with no tier links. So just right. a quick win right there that you can capture. 
Uh, exactly. Maybe if we, if we now just move back a little bit to to get me links. So you, you mentioned that you started it um, just with uh, kind of solving your own problem, which I, I find that all successful uh, SEO companies start out that way. Someone that has right. sites or clients that just needs to solve a problem. Thus, right. you you solved it super well, and also decided to uh, to provide the service for others. Right. Um, so I just wanted to to know how you because you you're really like a master of systems from what I hear from other uh, podcasts and videos. Um, we're just wondering how you kind of organize everything into systems with VAs and uh, everything like that. For sure. I mean, I so I had uh, I mean it was a really really weird story. So I had a guy but back when I was doing those old um, e-commerce websites. I had a guy that I actually emailed in to to my agency at the time and he was like um hey i want a job and i was like i'm not hiring i says but i'll i'll, I'll teach you seo if you want like I'll, I'll teach you i liked his email i liked him and i was like i'll teach you seo and this again this just comes from i mean really all the success i've had i think just comes from being good with people being good in business doing deals and just doing things properly so i met this guy and this guy was um he he ranked some affiliate sites with me i talked quite a lot and eventually I started paying him, maybe a few months later, started paying him something. And at this point, I decided I was going to start the, the link building company. And he was kind of the, the main guy that was helping me at the time. Now, he's this guy's now my manager. He manages the whole fulfillment side of the business. He makes he he, he, he makes quite a bit of money actually doing it. It's a cut of sales now um, as well. But basically, he um he just came in, he was keen, and I I kind of said to him, like, look, I'm going to teach you how to do this outreach stuff, and you're going to do it really, really well. And for a few months, it was just me and him, like, just just doing it, just learn, just, like, building up these these Google, like, Google Sheets was as how everything's built in my, my whole system. Right, and right. Just constantly, we just kept building on everything to make things more efficient, to make the product better, to make the delivery times better, to make um, the relevance of the links better. There was just so much stuff that, that happened, you know. Um, and then from there, we were kind of at a point where I was like, look, I need to grow this company now. I can't sit and build links. So I started to pass things off to him. And then more and more, I was learning this would have been back in. I had always used kind of like VAs um, for like little small projects. I used like Upwork. So I was familiar with it, with the concept of you shouldn't hire like a UK team, right? Um, because like a full UK team to, to do your work because it costs you... Um, probably close to six, seven X what it costs to maybe do things out in the Philippines. And the people are just the same. They're just as good. Actually, some of the people in the Philippines are even better because there's a lot of people that do link outreach out there, right? So I was like, right, I need to, uh, you know, I would used Upwork and all that stuff. And really what I started to do was uh, I was like to, to the guy working with, I was like, hey, I, we need to hire hire Filipinos. We need to get a few full-time Filipinos. So that's that's kind of what went down. I started creating systems for how to hire these people and how to you know train them and how to how to how to get them into our 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 um, our whole our whole ecosystem. You know, so right. I actually did a blog post on Pitchbox.com. Yeah, so you can check it out. Which which spoke about this and how I created that. I've got an end like I've got a course which is just for my team. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's like a 30, 30 video part course which teaches them link outreach. I mean, I had given this out. This is like the valuable part of my business. But it, but within essentially the, these new staff go into this course. This has been like tried and tested through probably like 20, 30 people now, maybe even more than that actually, um, including the word we're fired. So 20, 30 people have been through this course and like all their questions that they ask have added more videos to this course, right? And it's now like a complete solution. We know within a couple of weeks, basically of hiring someone, if they're going to be good, right? Now the reason the way I got good at that was I I just I just asked questions like I I met a guy called Mad Singers I don't know if you know Mads but he's like um he's massive on like he's an old management consultant who worked for IBM and I was like you know but back when I was starting to kind of scale this company I was asking him so many questions he he helped me out um like like with so much stuff so if you're you're trying to scale up the age you should speak to Mads but he basically taught me things like start to look at how much money the staff produce you. So I started to look at things like how much for what I'm paying the staff, how many links are they building and what's my staff cost per link. Right. And that changed everything. Cause I had these staff that I was like, I like this, I like this member of staff, but then I compared them against this other member of staff and I was paying double for a link for them to do it as compared to someone else. And just right. by actually starting to get statistical and do numbers with things, um, it started to open things up and now our whole system like it, it shows us this stuff automatically. It pulls it all out automatically. It's ri ridiculous what we've been able to do with Google Sheets. So 
really i spent a year a really a hard year working on all that and making amazing systems and putting that in a position to where it is now where that can scale to build thousands of links per month right and really the majority of the teams all out in the philippines that do that do the bulk of the work we now have managers in the philippines which are starting to manage other filipinos um <laughs> and we have obviously the guy i'm working with which he kind of oversees the whole thing and now when i'm having conversations it's things like hey how, what can we do to get the price down here? What can we do to to get the, the the fulfillment time up here? And that's where I come in. I just kind of advise him on ideas for making the systems a little bit better and then he'll implement the whole thing, right? So I spend a very, a very little amount of time there because it's really, really good. And all I really often check is that the quality that's coming in is great and the quality that's going out is fantastic. And that as long as it's producing great, great links all day long, like I don't need to be like micromanager and involved in it anymore i just focus now more on the marketing sales side yeah, um, yeah. and that's that's really where i'm putting the majority of my effort now yeah so, i also uh, wanted to congratulate you on all the success so first off the dfy acquisition uh yeah, then the you. i forgot i sorry i forgot the name of the the second one but i think seo, was, SEO guest posts i think it was about a month back yeah sorry i think it was about a month back about a month ago yeah it was about that yeah. Yeah, so yeah. just wanted to to talk to you about that and um, how you really managed to grow through these acquisitions. Um, For sure. Yeah, so it was actually um, it was a good friend of mine. Do you know James Dooley? Yeah. James Dooley. Yeah. So when I when I bought DFY Links, um, it was it was you know it was a good deal because I there was not many people that could have bought DFY Links in its in its in its form because um, in order to buy a business like that, you need to be able to fulfill right. DFY had it was a remarkably successful um, link building company. Mm-hmm. They had a lot of customers that were in the, the, the pending orders and they had lots of customers who were wanting to place more orders, right? So unless you had an ability to fulfill on the back end of that, either on a support level or on a, on a links level, you wouldn't have been able to buy that business, right? So it was limited in probably who it could have sold to, although it was remarkably successful. So I was in the perfect position to buy that because I had been supplying DFY for a while at a wholesale level, doing a lot of the guest posts, right? And all these systems that I just spoke about was literally the year prior to this. So I had all, I had this whole great back end. And if I now I now thought to myself, if I just are I'm the front end guy, I can make a I can make a higher profit, right? Because I'm not selling them at wholesale rates to sell them on. I can now make more profit by selling them directly to the public and becoming right. the it's like it's like the wholesaler becoming the retailer as well, right? Does that make sense? Like yeah. I now had the fantastic supply to to, to, to fulfill this, but I, if I became the retailer and owned the retail as well, it means that I can make more profit because I own the right. full system. And that was what I was talking about earlier. Like you want to own the own the entire the, yeah, the entire with, thing. Uh, e-commerce dropshipping. Precisely, exact same thing. You want to be in as con- much control as possible in business, right? So that was that was just a great move, and it just it wasn't something that was planned. It just came up. It, the opportunity was there. I snapped it up in two seconds, and it was James Dooley that was like, he was like, you need to keep doing this. He says, all you need to do, you have this back end that just works. Like, all you need to do is feed in as much customers as possible. He says, so every time you hear about a link building company for sale, just buy it. Like, just buy it because... <laughs> Yeah. essentially what you get with that is because my product's so good and I can offer such a good service, such good support, anyone who comes to me is going to to stay and make me a lot of money. They, they'll do really well. They were really happy. It's just going to be a great relationship. All I need to do is focus on getting customers, right? That's that's my only goal of the business, right? to scale it. Um, all that back-end stuff that took me you know, years to get good at, including all the years of learning outreach, it's all past now. I'm very good at it and I don't need to, to dedicate you know, half of my week to, to, to working on that anymore. So because that's all in stone and that's all working really, really well, I just need to get customers. And one of the best ways to get customers instead of, I mean, I do ads, I, I, I try to scale, I try to do right. sales calls, I do a lot of stuff to get customers. But um, if you buy a business that already has a thousand of them, you don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to do very much and you can make a hell of a lot of money, right? Because you just take that business, you just plug it right in. So that was what happened with DFY and um, and people ask me like, oh, how did you manage to to fulfill all of the DFY? Like, how did you like that? Must have been a complete nightmare. And I was like, I was already doing it before. I was the wholesaler for them, right? So nothing, nothing changed. You know, I mean, I was, I was already, I was already fulfilling um, half the stuff anyway. So for me to take it on and do it was just like I had to work out new problems now. So support. Um, there was, um, you know, now one of the biggest problems I get a lot of people come to me who don't know how to do link building. 
and they want to know how to do link building and they want to buy links. So that's why I'm creating things like courses and training. That's why I'm now creating an auditing service, which is going to help people to um, to ultimately get a, a fuller picture of what they need to do and how many links they need to build for their campaigns. So all these things now are like helping people to use my business better. And that's that's what good business is. You you notice the problems of uh, that you're experiencing that, that is causing you not to not to make money and you just work on those problems, right? You build solutions. And that's where, you know, guys like Elon Musk or, you know, um, Jeff Bezos, all these guys make so much money is because they just listen to their customers and look at the problems in their business and they'll make one one decision to create one unique thing um, which will completely, you know, transform the entire business. Like Amazon, you know, created Prime, Elon Musk, um, you know, created, you know, different types of cars based on listening to his customers. So there's there's so much there's so much stuff you learn from doing business and it allows you to to grow it massively just by being at the top and thinking about new ways of doing yeah, things, which yeah. gives your customers a better experience and ultimately um, grows the business and makes you the better player. Yeah, and it's not just about... Um you don't have to completely reinvent or invent something new. You just need to make it slightly better, slightly more enjoyable, slightly easier. Easier for, for the customer. Happy, happy to, to give you the business. People, I mean, people at the end of the day, they want push button solutions for everything, right? So right. If, 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 if somebody comes and, you know, b- b- buys a link off me, for example, um, I want to make that process for them as easy as damn possible to do, right? I want to make sure that it's just simple. They just come, they buy, they get what they, you know, they, they, they get what they paid for um, and they get it in a good, the time that was promised and that it was easy for them to do it and so they can easily do it again, right? If I have all this mad stuff that goes on and I start asking them a bunch of questions, making them fill out forms or I start, you know, doing lots of crazy things and sending them to all sorts of web pages and making them go through down this mad process and make it difficult for them to order, they're not going to order, right? And it's the same thing as even prior to that. If somebody wants to, the, I mean, the, 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 that side's pretty well covered, but the side before that, where before somebody buys the link, they have all sorts of questions. People have issues. People have, they, you know, people have so many problems. I don't know how to pick my anchor text. I don't know how to um, do tiered link building. I don't know how to, um, I, don't, I don't know how many links to build. I've got money here. I've got all this money, but I don't know how, I don't know how many links I need to build, what type of links I need to buy. Right. So that's why you create things. You create courses or you create, um, you know, auditing systems, all these different things, which helps them to make that job like a million times easier, right? And right, by making right. their job easier, it's helping the customer, right? Which ultimately means your business will do better. Like adding value to people and actually helping them get results is the way you make a great business. It's not it doesn't come from amazing marketing. If you apply good marketing to a bad business, it will never work. You need to have the great business. And then have marketing behind that, and that's where you win every time. Good, good products sell sell themselves, right? Sell exactly. You don't need to do you don't need to do ads. I mean, look at guys like Tony Robbins, for example. Like he did, he won't run a paid ad in his life. He's got you know raving fans that love him because of all the value that he's offered and all the you know help he's given so many people. He could now sell thousands of people a twenty five thousand dollar you know event um, in two, two minutes, right? Because he's got that reputation of being a great person, a great business businessman, right? And that's the that that's the aim of the game. Just help people and it dude, it comes back every single time, you know. Right. You, you'll get customers that way. Well this this has been this has been amazing man. Super, super yeah. value packed. Um for anyone listening and, and watching this um course, the free course and um the the e commerce case study will be linked uh, below. Um Gary, if people want to find out more about you, drop you a message, where can they do that? Uh, you can get me on Facebook. It might take me a few days to get back to people because I've taken it off my phone now because I get a lot of messages on it. But if, they, if they've got any questions, they want um, consults or they want to speak about links, they can email in to support at getmelinks.com. The email is on getmelinks.com. That's going to be the best place to get in for business. For just general questions, you get me on Facebook, but um, don't spam me. I'll take a day or two to get back to you. <laughs> Cool. Uh, Thanks so much for coming on. Have a good day and uh, excited to to speak more. (laughs) You too, buddy. Thank you very much. I appreciate you inviting me on.